Hello and welcome back for the final ever time to the Lincoln Loco 2. Hope you're all doing well today and if this screen might look a bit weird to you, you might have missed last episode. So go back and watch last episode where you saw the final game of the season with Lincoln United before we resigned as the Lincoln United manager. And today's episode, we are going to go 10 years into the future and see if Lincoln can try and stay within the upper echelons of the Premier League and try and maybe win some more competitions and things like that without me as the manager. Uh, we're going to do it in two parts. First of all, we're going to go five years into the future because I think in five years' time, we might still have some existing players at the club still. Ten years' time, I imagine most of the club will have turned around completely. So that's what we're going to do in today's episode, five years and then ten years. Just want to say as well, thank you ever so much for all your support across the entire series from its very first episode all the way up to now. For those of you who watched every single episode, I mean, fair play. That is commendable. That is a big effort from you guys. So thank you very much uh, for every view, every like, every comment, everything like that. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully plenty more to come in FM20. Now, I would say let's go on holiday, but uh, I've already simulated anyway. So I can just go straight here and just load load it up. You know, Lincoln Loco 2 plus five years. I can load it up already. And so we're now back in uh, 2044, five years into the future. I should also say we will go through all the leagues as well in this particular episode. I know a lot of you have been asking for that as well to see the kind of change and things like that. So we will go through that in today's episode as well. But for this five-year point, I just want to look at Lincoln United to start off with and just see... More, more more, of a team, more than anything else. You can sort of see here uh, what's going on. We'll look at more details in the 10-year part. Uh, but currently, uh, Mikhail Teta is the manager, which is interesting. Bizu is still the player, he's a captain, and Thomas Lavnezvich is still there as well. Obviously, we won the title this year, or that particular year. The season afterwards, when we retired on, was the year we came second in the table. And since then, it looks like they've maintained it a little bit. They finished ninth, actually, the season afterwards, which is kind of poor. But recovered to a fifth-place finish an 8th place finish, and then a 4th place finish. So we've had a bit of a mix of Champions League and Europa League football and no European football as well. As mentioned though, I do want to be looking at the team rather than anything else in this 5-year period. We'll do more of the in-depth stuff in the 10-year period or so. But as you can see here, Selinkia is still in goal, which is really good. He's 33 years old now, but still being the main goalkeeper for Lincoln United and has obviously been there for an awful long time, doing really well, really getting his, his conceded goals right down, to be fair. We struggled a little bit with him on occasion, but he's got it right down to like 32, 34, 37. Very, very good stuff from Selinkia. I like to see that five years into the future. Nesvich is still there as well, and he's valued at 57 or 53 million pounds, which is an awful lot of money after he bought him for 30 million pounds from Barcelona. But you get some decent ratings, nothing stand out massively amazing, but decent ratings nonetheless. And Nesvich is still there. Peter Pelican is still at the club, surprisingly. I didn't think he'd still be there. He's 33 years old now, though. Thought he could have moved on at some point, but has stayed at the club. Never got more goals in the league than that first season with us. Uh, that first season got 31 goals overall, 13, 14, 15, 14, 14. I mean, he's done all right, to be fair, hasn't he? He's not doing too badly out there but not quite as good as that season that we had with him, uh, the one that he had for us. Bizu still at the club as well, valued at £48 million. He must have had some good seasons to be valued at that and be on £185,000 per week. I'm surprised he's still at the club, to be fair. I'm not quite sure how he's managed to get new contracts signed because he's made no international appearances, so I'm very confused about the work permit situation because I thought he was going to have to go at some point. Clearly not, unless he's got sort of British nationality now or something like that. He's got, yeah, he's got British nationality, so that's probably why... He's been given the extension contract because he's got that nationality, so he doesn't have to go through work permit regulations. Again, after his second season with us, he never really capitalised. He's not really done very well in scoring goals since that season. If we're honest. He's not broken double figures since then in the league. He's broken double figures overall, but not, not often, only twice. So really, this is probably the reason why Lincoln United haven't won another Premier League title because they've got Bizu up front who can't score goals there again. Who else is still here? It's Chris Hart. Chris Hart is still kicking around as well. Um, hasn't been getting as much game time, but still seems to be a relatively integral part of the squad. His ratings aren't anything to write home about, but still looks to be there looking pretty decent. And then Adam Doherty is also still at the club five years into the future as well. But he really has gone downhill with his ratings. A 6.52 across all his games this season. That is that is poor. Still good to see, though, that there's still some names and people kicking around five years in the future, which is good. Uh, so we'll go through to 10 years in the future and, uh, and see if anyone is still there. And now we're in 2049, 10 years in the future. So we'll jump back to Lincoln United uh, and see how they've got on. So... 
obviously went through the past five seasons last time around, uh, which was here through to like here, eighth place. Came up with a fourth place, a sixth place, a seventh place, a sixth place, a 14th place, and a ninth place. So they are starting to drop down a little bit, perhaps not being that big side that they once were anymore. Uh, Andre Bellotti is now the manager as well, but we will look through managers in a second as well. But they're currently playing in Hillsborough in Sheffield, which means that I presume that they're either getting a new stadium or expanding the Mark Mason Memorial Metro Dome, which they are doing. They're expanding it to nearly 40,000 seats, which is pretty big to be fair. And they've also got a massive stadium sponsorship, £8 million a season. Where was that in my day? Where was that in my day? If we look at the players though, Looking down here, uh, I can't recognise any names, unfortunately. I wish I could. I think this guy, Iris Kostic, did I see him last time on the five-year one? He just he just moved there on the, on the five-year deal one. Uh, so obviously he's doing all right, Iris Kostic, but there's no names that we recognise from back in our day. Ten years in the future, it's too far for them now. So then, let's look at the managers. Who's come in since I left? The Quite a few, actually. Quite a few. So there's me, uh, interestingly enough. Before, Brendan Rodgers comes in for four years. I think he was the Man City manager before before I did anything. Yeah, Man City manager before I retired and then went to Lincoln United. So that's quite an interesting one. Also, Italy manager for a while as well, which is quite an interesting one. Uh, after that, Mikel Arteta came in uh, and won the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup and the Community Shield. So that was pretty good for Arteta. What did Brendan Rodgers win? Nothing. So Arteta's won a few uh, interesting competitions. Uh, James Rodriguez came in for 170 days before he was sacked, which is fair enough. He didn't win anything in that 170 days, got sacked. And then we come back with Isco, who's the Isco. I mean, this is the James Rodriguez. It is the James Rodriguez. Isco then comes in for 12 days as caretaker manager before Bernard Mensah, who I believe is a player for, uh, he's currently manager of Leicester, but I believe he's an older shot in real life. Maybe. This is not the Bernard Mensah at uh, older shots. Ignore what I said about that then. This is a different Bernard Mensah who's actually quite a good footballer by looks of things. Uh, but he came in to manage the club for just under a year before he was sacked. And then Isco became caretaker manager again. And then this guy, Dalibor Vukanic, he came in for a year and then left the manager role, I presume, to be a manager of Man City, as you can see here. Um, he's a regen, though, so obviously actually not a real person. Before Adam Ette is the caretaker manager, he's under 18 manager in real life. Actually did play some football, but I presume in other terms, he's actually a manager. Does it say down here what he does in real life? In real life, he is the under 18 manager at Ipswich, apparently. Stayed there for an awful long time, as you can see. But um, went to Lincoln United after that uh, as an under-18s manager. And is still there as an under-18s manager, interestingly. And then Andrea Bellotti's come in very recently uh, for... Oh, he's, he's had a string of managerial roles, as you can see down here. Lincoln United, Man City, Napoli, Italy, Borussia Dortmund, Brighton, Watford. I mean, the list goes on there, to be fair. Uh, Sunderland, Brentford, Coventry, Gillingham, Northampton, Barnet. And then, obviously, we started off at... Uh, well, was a player at Roma before then as well. Um, obviously, that's not real life, though, because that's in, what, 2027. So... A very interesting career for Andrea Bellotti, I've got to say. So, plenty of managers, a lot of caretaking managers. Is uh, Isco, is he still at the club? He's assistant manager at Tottenham now. So, he just came in as the assistant. He came in as an assistant manager and was caretaker manager a couple of times before moving to Tottenham to be their assistant manager. So, he's clearly got no aspirations for the top job, has Isco, but he's ha he's happy to be the assistant. Let's look at the staff, actually, then. Are there any actual ex-players or anything like that? Oh, there's loads of staff. Right, Andrea Bellotti, we spoke about him. Um, any other names that we recognise here, like ex-players? Unfortunately, I don't think there are. I mean, this could just be my football knowledge not being good enough as I look down here. But I don't think there are. I think most of these guys are going to be like regens. Well, this guy isn't, I suppose. It's just Andrea Bellotti, I reckon, who's come in. And this guy's a regen, exactly. So it's, that's a bit of a shame, really. I thought we'd see a few more ex-players if Isco is there and Bellotti's there as well, but clearly not. So obviously we've had looked at the Premier League briefly. Obviously we were here last time coming second. So a ninth, a fifth, an eighth, a fourth, a sixth, a seventh, a sixteenth, a fourteenth, and a ninth place finish. We came fifth once with 75 points. Like that 75 points would have been good enough to win the Premier League the year we won it, I think, actually, as well. So we have done well in some years, but we've just been unlucky with other teams doing probably a lot better than they had done in recent years. So you can see the points totals looking not too bad, to be fair, but it could be better in some situations. What I am interested in is how have we done in a Champions League? 
We've had three Champions League seasons and we've got to the first knockout round every single time. Obviously, we lost to Barcelona or Inter Milan, sorry, in our one, didn't we? But then they lost to Seville and Barcelona in subsequent years. So first knockout round's decent. What about Europa Leagues? We've had four Europa League campaigns as well since I left the club. Uh, a first knockout round lost to Bordeaux. A semi-final loss to Juventus. Imagine if they'd gone on to win the Europa League. That would have been mental. Uh, and then Napoli and Juventus also knock us out in the first knockout round as well. In the meantime, though, we did say that we'd seen another Carabao Cup, another FA Cup win, and a Quinta Shield win under Brendan Rodgers, was it? Or was it Mikel Arteta? I think it was Arteta who got the, the wins for us, which was quite good. Uh, so that was good for him, obviously. So no other trophies in there, but at least we've won an FA Cup and another Carabao Cup and another Quinta Shield. Not many players coming in to replace anyone in that overall best 11 by the looks of things. Pelican stays there, Gustavo stays there, Bizu stays there. In fact, Pelican might be in, in, you know, introduced, actually. I think he wasn't there when we left the club. Uh, new midfielders in Mendes and Bolius, apparently. I mean, by looking at this, 260 appearances. Seven, what's this? 388 appearances and 79 goals from the centre of midfield from this guy. I mean, to be fair, that is very impressive. Still at the club as well. No wonder he is in there. He is, in fact, apart from... And Nesvich is now the top appearance maker. But he comes in uh, behind... Oh, Salinkia. Selinki is the top appearance maker with 473, then it's Nesvich with 422, then it's Hans with 388, and then just behind it is Gabriel Tyriak, who's still the best left back we've ever had apparently at the club, which is pretty mental. Uh, there's a new guy, Bullock, is there, Nesvich, Craig, and another goalkeeper as well that we're not really too fussed about, but that best 11 you love to see it. Affiliated clubs, uh, this has not changed at all. These are all the affiliated clubs that we had when we were there as well. Chesterfield could be a new one. Yeah, that was in 2045. That's a new one. But I've, I made the affiliations with Western Sydney Wanderers, Orlando City and Boston. So no real changes there. Not that you ever really saw this, I don't think. It never really played into any of our plans in the end. So I think that's kind of it to look at Lincoln. I'm not quite sure what else to look at. Any landmarks? I mean, we've had a new chairman a couple of times, things like that. And apparently we failed English Premier League financial fair play once or twice as well, probably looking at this. We've had quite a few actually takeovers takeover complete takeover complete there takeover failed interesting stuff actually looking at this but um so yeah not massive amounts of landmarks apparently so finally then we're going to look through the tables in england and we may look at some of the cups as well uh, to see what's going going on but these are the teams that are currently in the premier league and really it's nothing too dissimilar to real life apart from obviously lincoln united but barnsley are there which is an interesting one so are derby county which is pretty interesting that there's not really been that much change. I mean, obviously, you've got teams like Cardiff and Stoke who have been Premier League sides but relegated in recent years, but they are within the past few seasons in real life of memory than they have been in the Premier League. But Barnsley and Lincoln United, they any sort of anomalies there. In the Championship, then, we have a look through here. Sunderland are going to be back in the Premier League alongside Newcastle United. Everton have dropped down, interestingly, as have like Watford and Southampton, which is, you know, bad for those clubs, of course. But looking down the rest of it, I mean, Chesterfield are there. Obviously, in real life, they're in the National League. But in Football Manager, they always seem to do really well for some reason. Not entirely sure why. They're the only real shock that have come up, which is a little bit of a shame, really. Coventry are there as well, perhaps. And, I mean, Burton and Luton have sort of been bouncing around, I imagine. Things like that. If we look into League One, then, Lincoln City are in League One, because I've already checked them out. Lincoln City have sort of been a league one club pretty much if we can actually get back on them please they've been a league one club with flirtations with the championship not really doing much unfortunately but uh it doesn't matter too much i suppose uh if we look back in league one though huddersfield down in league one which is interesting uh bristol city blackburn i mean that blackburn are there in real life or they have been recently haven't they uh, Mansfield, they're up there, which is a bit of a shock, perhaps. I don't know. Birmingham in League One as well. And Stockport County made their way up to League One as well from the Vanarama National League. So, change has happened here, which is good. Uh, hopefully, we'll see a bit more, though, as we go into League Two, where Leighton Orient, Hereford, York, Boston, all National League clubs in real life are there at the moment. Or Boston, the National League North, actually, as well. I think Hereford could be as well. They might even be below it at the moment. I can't remember where Hereford are in the league standings, which is interesting. Chester are up there as well. Oldershot, Barnet. That's pretty good to see. Scarborough United. I mean, that's just oh, Scarborough Athletic, sorry. They're up there. That's good to see. Southport, uh, Forest Green, you know, Scunthorpe and Dagenham being relegated. So a lot of change in League Two. So hopefully we'll see some interesting clubs in the National League then. Uh, Grimsby been promoted. Gillingham are in there, interestingly. Uh, looking down. Kettering. Uh, who's come down? Shrewsbury have come down, to be fair. As have Northampton. 
and um, FC United are in there. They've not come down there, have they, actually? I'm thinking of Salford United. Or Salford City, sorry, I should say. Accrington have had a bit of a fall from Grayshead down in 11th as well, so that's pretty cool, I suppose. Uh, Van Rama National League North, Oldham and Rochdale, both in the National League North. They've had some big falls from Grace, but Cleethorpe's Town, all the way up there, that's very high for them. As is for Nairsborough, actually, I'd imagine. And Witten Albion. I swear we played Witten Albion in like our first seasons, as with Stoch- Stocksbridge Park Steels. So there's been an awful lot of movement down here. Imagine if a team like Stocksbridge Park Steels actually got into the Football League. Like, that would be crazy. Pontefract Collieries, even they're up here now. They've been relegated, but they're up here, which is interesting because we played them in the very early seasons as well. Uh, in the National League South, Dilich Hamlet has just been promoted. Uh, I don't know. Billericay, they're in there in real life, actually, aren't there? There's not, I mean, I'm not so familiar with these clubs because we never got to play them, and I don't think there's actually been that much movement by looks of things. FC, Rom- FC Romania, that's the club that we got Gabriel Tyriak from there up in the National League South. So, some movement there. Now, at one point, we were in the Evo Stick Northern Premier League, uh, and Altrium have dropped down a little bit. I think they were a bit higher. So have Blythe. Uh, Morpeth, they were always a bit of a team that we had a bit of a, a battle with. Chorley have dropped down quite a bit as well, but there's not real. Oh, Morecambe! Bloody hell, Morecambe are all the way down here. Now, that is some fall from grace for Morecambe. Now, obviously, it goes way beyond this, apparently, but they drop down an awful lot, and they just keep going down and down and down. They're a semi-professional club now. That is really bad for Morecambe. How have they done the, just the past few years? Like, we go back to the when we, when we start this, 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 uh, this, this whole series. They were in Skybet League 2. Uh, and then they drop down to the National League, and then to keep just keep dropping down. Basically, it's if you're a Morecambe fan, you should have turned off a few minutes ago. And this then, the Evo Stick Northern Premier League Division One East. What a mouthful that was! Is where it all started off for us playing teams like Osset United. I remember playing them and Spalding United, Tadcaster Albion, Greasley. All these teams we faced. To be fair, Grantham have had a big drop, as have North Therabee. To be fair, they've dropped down. Boston Town, I believe they were probably a little bit higher. So a few teams have dropped down as for this division. I mean, North Ferriby at one point were National League, uh, just National League. Yeah, they were top of the National League at one point, I think. So North Ferriby having a bit of a fall from grace. Um, but some other clubs that we started off this, this, this whole entire series with still in this division. A quick look at the past winners of the Carabao Cup. Uh, obviously, this in save started off in the 2018-19 season and it sort of goes up here. You can see that we won it there and we won it there. You can also see that Manchester United lost five or five finals in six years, which is pretty poor for them. Obviously, their fans won't be too happy with that, but it's really not very different. I mean, only us and Bournemouth are like the outside of the usual suspects to win it, which is crazy. The FA Cup, we win it once then, apparently in 2044-45, which is, which is good to see, obviously, but... Again, you look down this, outside of us, it's just won by the usual suspects, isn't it? No, Lots of different teams get to the final and runners up and things like that. Everton, Leicester, Stoke, West Ham, uh, Southampton, Bournemouth, Stoke. But the winners are just the usual suspects, apart from us one season. And to be fair, that was when I wasn't manager. So that's that's one of the biggest achievements, probably. In terms of the Europa League, uh, lots of different winners, but quite a few English Winners in there. Inter Milan have won it quite a few times, I've got to say. Uh, in recent years, Man City and Arsenal, Tottenham, Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, loads of English winners. But Aston Villa, oh, I remember when Aston Villa won two in a row. That was really annoying at the time because that, that meant that we didn't qualify for European competitions those two seasons when Aston Villa won it. That was really, really annoying when that happened. So always held a bit of a grudge against Villa for that one. And then if we look up to the Champions League as well, Again, plenty of English winners in there as well. In fact, you can sort of... There can't be more than 10 winners of the Champions League in this entire time. We've got, right, Atletico, Man City, Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Atletico, PSG, uh, Seville, Dortmund, Arsenal, Tottenham, around Madrid. Because you've got 12 different winners across this whole thing. Just shows, isn't it, that really... Something has to be done in real life, doesn't it, to, to sort this out? Because we want to have a competition where there's loads of different winners. Like, if you go back down here, I mean, that's probably not the best example because you, right here you can see three in a row for Ajax, three in a row for, for Bayern Munich, two in a row for Liverpool, two in a row for Forest. And Liverpool, you get with the picture. You get There's not actually that many 
individual winners are there. Either way, that is going to be that for this episode. And that is that for FM19. So the next time you see a Foot Manager video, it will be for FM20 which is very, very exciting. Make sure as well you keep watching the FIFA 20 stuff. That's going to keep us going before FM20 comes out. But then, of course, when that comes out, all hell's going to break loose on this channel. So much stuff planned for FM20. Uh, obviously, I spoke about some stuff in yesterday's episode, but look forward to it because there's going to be so much stuff coming your way. So that's going to be really exciting. But now, properly, it is over. The Lincoln Loco 2 has finished. One day in the future, I'm sure we will do a Lincoln Loco 3 with a different club with Lincoln in the name. I'm sure that will be around at some point. But until that happens, thank you very much for watching. This has been the Lincoln Loco 2. What a journey. Thank you. Goodbye.